Atlas. Yeah, they did uh, Persona, Shin Megami Tensai, some other stuff, I bet. Atlas, you love them. Maybe. But as for me, I just never really got around to checking them out properly, and now I'm too scared to ask. There is, however, one Atlas game that is near and dear to my heart. Macken X. Okay, uh, let me take a look here. We got that sleek futuristic blue, we got that upbeat synthy soundtrack, smooth round characters. Yeah, this is a Dreamcast game, alright. One of only two Dreamcast games that Atlas did, actually, the other being Desperia, which is a Japan-only RPG thingy that I can't get very far with at all. Fine, then why don't we let it decide? We'll let Machin decide. Hold up, is that Ryan Drummond, aka Elliot G. Ballard, aka Sonic the Hedgehog? Say it like you mean it. Oh, son, we got Lani Manella too? Well, goddamn, looks like we got a good one on our hands here. Anyway, we're here with Kei Sagami as she visits her dad's super sketchy top secret lab. Some shit pops off and this Russian dude with the burr arms kidnaps her dad so she takes up this special sword, Makin, and sets off on a big old adventure. There is a hell of a lot more to that premise of course, being an Atlas game, and lots of discussion around the nature of humans and psychology and the existence of souls and such, but it's kind of easy to overlook that because this one is a straight up arcade style banger. Look at this shit here, dashing around corridors, jumping about, slashing fools with reckless abandon. This was one of the first games I ever played with something approaching tactical swordplay. Don't get me wrong, Ocarina of Time changed the game with that targeting and blocking thing which basically spawned Dark Souls and we also had Bushido Blade making fighting games all strategic like, but I don't think I'd ever seen anything quite like this in an FPS before. The mechanics are nice and all, but the key to what makes this game so special is variety. Our mission to find all the Blade Masters and avert the apocalypse takes us all over the globe from Hong Kong to Istanbul, London to Athens, Kanazawa to Moscow. Some of these locations are sort of recognisable as their real world counterparts, whereas some of them are kind of insanely stylized. For instance, last time I went to London, I don't remember this huge Nazi monolith looming large and all these torture dungeons around, but hey, maybe I missed it. Point being, with so much hopping from place to place, you never really get bored of seeing the same aesthetic. It keeps it fresh. And even though this game is far too fast paced to be cosy or vibey, there are nice locations to see, like this quiet little street in Vienna as we make our way up to the theatre. The lighting and drapery gives it a very inviting, sitting out in the veranda sipping on a cold one kind of feel. And during our travels, we meet all kinds of different people just waiting for you to jack them brain jack them, that is. See, this game features body swapping as a core mechanic. Earlier on when I said we step into Kay's shoes, that's not strictly true, we actually step into the shoes of Macken, the sword itself. It's a living sword guys, pretty cool. And so, being alive and conscious, it can sort of merge and assimilate with its user, so you brain jack people and you use their skills. And these aren't just any people, these are Atlas people. I'm talking huge mafia don that throws living voodoo dolls. Russian burr hybrid who spits knives. British politician who fights with a spiked flail. Just fucking bonkers man. And we get some insight into all these characters too, not just because we can possess them and run around using their weapons, but also because there are cutscenes aplenty in this thing. The voice acting's pretty rich too, I'm not necessarily saying super high quality, but I don't care about that. It's varied and interesting to listen to, and it makes me feel some kind of connection with all the characters. Nobody feels bland or generic or vanilla, you know? Take a look at this fucking maniac. No lowly dog will prevent us from giving birth to a new world. The wicked people are in control of Europe, and they will never mend their ways. You should keep an eye on Europe. Now, once we have all these bodies at our disposal, we can swap through them at will, which is handy because like I say, certain characters can access areas that others can't. Sometimes in a very practical sense, like they have a certain level of clearance to open a gate, and other times in a more mechanical sense, like they could just jump higher or whatever. But mainly, what you're doing here is fighting, and once again, the baddies are super varied. We start out fairly tropey with the ninjas and the heavy gunners, but pretty soon we got the ton for wielding daredevil guys on roller skates and these janky robots that you gotta push down pits to open doors. Further into the game still, we got cyber nazis everywhere for some reason, and also an abundance of really freaky monsters. 
I'm talking real genuine unsettling shit too, like these Iron Maidens that only attack when you turn away like the booze from Mario? Or how about these scary insectile knights that haunt this cathedral? Am I playing Dark Souls, yes or no? As we go about, whacking and jacking will often be given moral choices to make. Just yes no stuff, but it's pretty crucial. Sometimes it will have an immediate effect, like changing up your next destination. Wait a minute. I, I don't want to go to India. Rude, but okay. And other times it will be Kay trapped inside the blade and speaking to you, asking moral questions about hope and faith and power and such. Truth to tell you, I haven't seen all the different endings, but I know that there are seven of them, and I'll probably play the game enough times to get them all rather than just YouTubing them. All that to say that I think the game has pretty good replay value. It's a little bit fiddly at first, but once you get used to the controls, locking on, dodging, blocking, etc, you do start to feel like a Blade Master. And there's no super cheap enemies either, most of them can be fought fairly easily so long as you have the right equipment or the right strategy. I sometimes wonder why Atlas never rebooted or continued this series, as it seemed to be received pretty well at the time. Although if this did drop today we would just have game journals saying this game has sword and is challenging therefore souls like. And I just... <sighs> it did get a port on PS2 called Mac and Shao which changed the camera angle to third person due to some motion sickness complaints, but otherwise no real legacy. I can see shades of this in things like Ghostwire Tokyo for instance and especially in Ghost Runner. Why everybody ghosts now? We also got indie games keeping the flame alive with stuff like Boomerang X from Devolver. I really gotta get into it about Devolver sometime as they just consistently keep putting out 5th and 6th gen flavoured bangers. I do definitely recommend checking out Mac and X because outside of a very small legacy there really isn't much else like this, and if you like smooth Sega aesthetics and arcadey beats then there's plenty here for you to enjoy. But for today folks, that's probably about it from me. But hey, you keep tuning into the channel and I'll keep macking videos. I just lost all my subscribers. Um, please thumb, sub, bell, etc. if you had a good time and uh, I'll see you in the next one.